Does water pool on the surface or immediately drain out of the bottom of your pot when you go to water your plants? If so, your soil has likely become hydrophobic. Hydrophobic conditions happen when the beneficial bacteria, fungi, and microbes within the soil die. And this is typically due to a lack of moisture. So if your soil sat in a bag for a long time before you got the chance to plant with it, or your greenhouse has dried out, let's say it was in the summer and it was extremely hot, or it was over the winter and you didn't plant, and now it's springtime and you're getting ready, you may encounter this issue, but there is a way to remedy it. The first thing that we'll wanna do is add that organic matter back into the soil. Our favorite ways to do this are via compost and worm castings. You can also use manure, but manure can come with some drawbacks such as pathogens, weed seeds. It can also be high in nitrogen and salt content. So we prefer to use worm castings, also known as worm poop, because it has all the benefits of manure without those potential drawbacks. To introduce fungi back into the soil, we can utilize things like mushroom compost or introduce mycorrhiza. Mycorrhiza comes in both liquid and powder forms that you can apply to your soil to help bring that fungal network back to life. Your plants utilize this mycorrhizal network to tap into nutrients that they might not otherwise be able to reach through their root systems. If you happen to be an avid cheesemaker, you can introduce whey back into the soil as a way to increase beneficial bacteria. To keep these beneficial bacteria and fungi alive, we have to support them. We like to do this by utilizing compost tea, molasses, and or fish emulsion. By providing our plants these nutrients, we're able to keep our soils nutrient rich and our plants happy and healthy. Wetting agents can be used to help decrease the surface tension of the water, making it easier for it to absorb into your soil. We don't like to use premixed solutions because many of them are not necessarily organic, but you can make your own. Utilizing agar agar, you can make a paste and then dilute it further before applying it to your soil. But there are many different recipes out there utilizing different household ingredients, so look up a few and figure out which one you can make with the things you already have. We just finished amending our soil, so we've taken our potting mix that was sitting in a bag for an extended period of time. It was really dry and hydrophobic, and I'm going to show you the difference between that potting soil and the soil that we just amended. So in this jar, I'm going to place our amended soil. This has the potting mix, mushroom compost, mycorrhiza, compost tea, and worm castings. So that's that soil. And then in this one, we have our hydrophobic soil, which has been sitting in this bag for an extended period of time. So here we have our soil that we just amended, and I'm going to add some water to this and show you how it soaks in thoroughly. And then this is our hydrophobic soil, and I'll show you how this one behaves. So we'll go ahead and add a little bit of water. You can see it's even. We don't have a whole lot that's pooling at the bottom. And now let's look at the hydrophobic. You can see this one just runs straight to the bottom and it's not soaking in. So if I take this, it's still dry. So with our amended soil, you can see the water has soaked through thoroughly. The soil is not necessarily rising to the top. It's still all the way down to the bottom of the container. And then if we come over here to our hydrophobic soil, you can see the soil is sitting on the surface and all of the water that we added is down below. So by amending our soil, we were able to bring it back to life so it can absorb moisture and feed our plants. Now that we've revived our hydrophobic soil, we wanna make sure that we keep it moist so that we keep those beneficial bacteria and fungi alive. Regular waterings and the utilization of the compost tea and fish emulsion or other soil amendments are the easiest way to do this. Whatever soil amendments you're using should have detailed instructions on the back of the package, and we like to set up a schedule so that we can stay on track. Our plants are typically only using the top six to 10 inches of soil and moisture. However, our garden beds are 24 inches deep, so we wanna avoid hydrophobic conditions down below so that we avoid issues like compaction and poor drainage. So deep watering will help ensure that we're getting that moisture all the way down to the bottom of our garden beds. With these simple tips, you should be able to revive your hydrophobic soil and have successful gardening seasons for years to come. Now get out there and get your hands dirty.